Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to look at second part of network in graph theory. Okay, first of all, here we are going to look at directed graph and undirected graph. After that, we are going to look at what is a weighted graph and unweighted graph. Let us look at the undirected graph and directed graph in simple graph first. A directed graph is a graph in which a direction is assigned to the edge connecting two vertices. Directed graphs are usually used to represent a flaw of certain process, for example, road maps, airline networks, electrical circuits, computer networks, and organization charts. Okay, so in this diagram, you can see for edge AB, B is the initial vertex and A is the terminal vertex. For HAC, C is the initial vertex and A is the terminal vertex. And then all the vertices are connected in one direction only. Okay, so if you look at undirected graph, we know that the degree or the number of edges for A, there are two. The number of edges for vertex B is also two. And then the number of edges for vertex C is three. And then the number of edges for vertex D is 1. So altogether, the sum of degree of vertex is 8. For a directed graph, the D in A over here means the number of edges going into vertex A is equal to 2. So we can see there are 1, 2. And then D out means the number of edges coming out from vertex A. That is 0. We can see there's none coming out from vertex A. And then for the second line here, the number of edges going in vertex B, there is zero. So we can see there's none, but there are two going out from vertex B. Okay, for vertex C, there are two that is going into vertex C. And then the edges that coming out from vertex C, there is one. The one that going two going into vertex D is equal to zero here and then the one that is coming out from vertex D is 1. So total degree it is still the same at. Okay now we look at the next graph which is about the graph with multiple edges and loops. We also have undirected graph and directed graph for this graph. Okay first we look at the undirected graph here the degree for P there are 2. Degree for Q, 1, 2, 3, 4. Degree, degree for R, 1, 2. Degree for S, 1, 2. Degree for T, 1, 2. And the loop here is a 2, so all together is 4. Therefore, the total or the sum of degree for all the vertex here is equal to 14. Okay, we look at directed graph. The edges that going into vertex P is equal to 1, so this is the 1. The edges that coming out from vertex P is 1, 1 here. And then the edges that going into vertex Q is 3. So there is 1, 2, 3. And then the edges coming out from vertex Q is 1. The edges going into vertex R is 1. And then the edges coming out from vertex R is 1. And then the edge, the edges going into vertex S is 1. Coming out of, from vertex S is 1. The edges going into vertex T is 1. Coming out 1. Okay, we consider 1 now. Uh, 1 is clockwise direction and the other one is anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so the total that the, of the edges that going coming out from vertex T is 3. There is 1, 2, 1 out, 1 in. Okay, the total of the edges is still the same, which is 14. Okay, so we can see from here, no matter whether it's a directed graph or undirected graph, the sum of edges or the degree will be always the same. Now let us look at example 1. Draw a directed graph based on the given information. We are given the set of vertices, PQR, STU, which means we have 6 vertices, and then a set of edges. Okay, so if I rearrange all the vertex pair together, we can see that there are 2 edges from vertex P, and then 1 edge from vertex R, and then 3 edges from vertex S. So I'm going to start with the one with the most vertices, which is S. Like this okay 
and then the S is going to R S going into Q and also T so this one will be R this is Q this is T so the edges that going into R I'm going to label with the arrow like this going into Q going into T so this tree is done we continue with PQ PQ so we only have vertex Q over here I'm going to add another one and label it as P okay draw from P to Q with the arrow and then continue with P to R so we already have R just join it to P so vertex P going into R the arrow will be like this and then the last one is R to Q so R to Q join it up with the arrow bear in mind we still have one vertex left over here so you can label it and mark it mark it and label it anyway okay which means this is an isolated vertex we continue with example two draw a directed graph based on the given information okay so this is a multiple edge and loop graph for a multiple edge and a loop graph you don't have to worry on how to draw because they will always tell you where is the loop and where is the multiple edge so for this question over here the loop is at vertex q and then rs is the multiple edge and then if you observe carefully on the degree given here we only have four vertices involved so i'm going to draw four vertices like this and then we are going to start with the loop and also the multiple edge so the loop is at vertex q i'm going to draw a loop and the multiple edge is at vertex sr okay then we have to consider slowly from uh, vertex p the edges that going into vertex p is one so we don't know which one is the one that going into vertex p because there can be three possibilities and then the one coming out from vertex p is one so what can i do is i'm going to join these two like this first and then for vertex q the edges that going into vertex q is three and then coming up from vertex q is two so if you look at the loop over here one clockwise and one anti-clockwise meaning that one going into and one coming out right so i'm going to deduct here becomes two this becomes one after that we look at vertex r the one that going into vertex r there's none so coming out from vertex r there are three so we already have two here i just add on one more okay meaning that there is one two three coming out from vertex r okay so this one is done okay the one that going into vertex s is three coming out is one so if you look at vertex x s there is one two already enter into x coming out from s is one but we don't know whether it's this one or this one okay so never mind we go back to q here q the vert the edges that entering into vertex q are two so maybe this one and also this one we already have one right so this one must be the answer and then the one that going out from q is one so this one must be going out so this one also done then we look at vertex p one going in one coming out so one coming out this one must be the one that going in then we check again for vertex s there are three edges that going in one two three and then coming out from vertex s is one so that's correct already okay next we are going to look at weighted graph and unweighted graph for weighted graph it can be directed graph and also undirected graph the edge is associated with the value or a weight and then the edge can represent distance between two cities the traveling time the current in an electrical circuit and also the cost okay if you look at the diagram on the right here we can see the weighted graph can be represented can be represented with distance cost the time the name of people and maybe the favorite food favorite game and so on okay we look at unweighted graph this is the diagram of unweighted graph it can be directed graph and also undirected graph and then the edge is not associated with the value or weight just nothing here the edge relates information like 
job hierarchy in an organization chart, floor map, tree map, and also bubble map. Now we look at one example which involves weighted graph. Okay, the diagram on the right shows one way path that Izaru can choose for his running practice. Vertex V1 is the starting position here. This is the starting position. And then Vertex V5 is the ending position before he goes home. So V5 is here, the ending position. Determine the shortest distance from V1 to V5. So if you look at the starting point over here from V1 to V5, we can see there are how many roads? This is the first route, this is the second route, and then this is the third route, and then this is, sorry, this one is the fourth route. Okay, so if you want to find out the shortest distance, 600 plus 500 is 1100, this one 500, 500, 500 is 1005. So for sure, we are going to take V1, V2 to V5 as the shortest distance. So it's 600 plus 500 is 100,000, 1,100 meter. Okay, B, find the longest distance from V1 to V5. So we have to look at the other three routes right now. The longest distance, for example, if we look at V1, V3, V4, V5, just now we already added up, it is 1,005. If you look at this, 600 plus 900 is 1,005, plus 500 is 2,000, plus 500 is 2,005. And then if you look at this one, 600 plus 800 is 1,004, plus 500 is 1,009. So we are going to take this as the longest road, which is 600 plus 900 plus 500 plus 500. So the total is 2,005 meter. Okay, for C, they ask you to find the vertices that must be passed through if the distance of the one-way run is between 1.4 kilometer and 2.1 kilometer. So the one that we find out just now is 2,500 meter, it's not in the range. This one, 1,100 meter, is also not in the range, meaning that that is the other two roads, which is V1, V3, V4, V5, because 500 plus 500 plus 500 is 1,500, and the other one is V1, 600 plus 800 is 1,400 plus 500, so it's 1,900. So that's V1, V2, V4, and V5. Okay, that's all for the lesson today. See you again next time.